uh, on a large printer, we're moving quite quite a way forward to, with the belts. That was a big issue. I mean, with those belts just stretching like crazy. Uh, we, we learned that you really need the, the steel belted belts in order for larger axes to work, like more than two or three feet, because they just stretch so much. So if they don't have the steel belting in them, they're just too stretchy. And then when you go, it has huge backlash. That's what it means. Even if the belt is pretty tight, we couldn't get it tight enough to make it not have backlash upon reversing direction. We, what we would do is we would move one millimeter uh, back and there would be no motion back. So it, it was at least like one millimeter backlash and everything else. And that, that was solved readily, actually, by using this small six millimeter. We went from the 15 millimeter to the six millimeter. And what I would actually suggest is, uh, I mean, we still have little issues on to, do, to resolve on the motion, like the, it's pretty good. Definitely the X and Y are quite good. They, no backlash. Looks like the motion is great. On a Z, there's still a little, a little bit of skipping. There's two issues we can do to address that. One is to actually really clean up the weights because the weights are like all over the place in terms of not being um, like evenly distributed and that puts more weight on one side than another. Um, I would definitely clean it up because we got to, in order to get the top performance of it, um, we could do that. And there's definitely something we could do like do a 12 by 12, one inch, that weighs 40 pounds. We can do one of those, put, hang it by weld little rings on the side, hang it. But we also want to have the wires go straight down so there is no, no angles. Uh, and that's easy to do. We can do, um, I've thought about that, we can do just, just an 8 millimeter bar on top welded to the frame and put the bearings on that and it would spin around the bearing so it's got a very smooth surface and like very mm -hmm. little friction. That's very so you can nail that, nice. just make it go up, down and then nice clean weight. That's also needed for the purpose of zeroing the Z motion because w upon zeroing, you have to go bottom out at an even plane. So if your weights like are uneven, one might land on the ground uh, first rather than the other. Uh, so they have to be equal to start with. But probably the idea there is, you know, because there's four motors, you want to make sure that every print you're getting that all equalized. So go down, bottom out on a structure that's even. That could be even like the table we have, that me little metal table. Like if you just bottom it out and you set that really even, then you know you're bottomed out. So what you do is you keep moving down and even like let it click, let it skip the belt a little bit, but you know that all the four went to the same place. Mm -hmm. And that's how we did it actually. We do that on a, on a larger pros. On the Y axis, because they, they could get out of alignment, what we do is we go all the way to the max until we hit the end where the end is at an equal position. And we let it click, belt skip a couple of times. So we know it's at that place and then we move it back and we know it's actually been aligned to, to the same place. So that the same kind of concept we want to use for the Z here and actually for the, the Ys too. And we, ha we want to do that within the, the firmware too, like the start G-code. And the start G-code will say, Move it all the way down until you bottom out, so you know you're even, and then start again. That's why we have bottom this, out. Yeah, that's why the yeah. stops is on one end of the axis. It, it yeah. simply knows the edge of that, and then it knows how many millimeters there's left to the other side. Well, see, the end stop does not do that. The end stop is on one side only. Yeah. So you could. I don't think there's a way like for you to trigger two end stops at the same time. That's kind of not how I it works. I think Typical. so. Marlin can be configured for both sides of the axis, of course. You can. Um, but it makes, yeah. an, it makes a guess. But ah, you mean for the bottom end? Oh, I got you. Okay. But for the but. evening out of the axis, you want to travel the opposite way, not against the end stop, because typically we use one end stop anyway. So bottom out against the other side, which has a hard physical stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just, just make sure we have a hard physical stop there so we could what we could do is put on like a collar on the one inch or just let it bottom out way end at the axis way at the axis end but since we weren't so accurate about how how even that is mounted on a frame we might want to put a dedicated stop which could be 3d printed or some one inch collar or something but bottom that out really means only the, the z or z axis right uh, technically or bottom or out or means or like or bottom but but, but I use the word bottom out also for, you also want for the, the Y. But why would we like to have that? Uh. So, I mean, there's no guarantee that your X axis, you don't know where this is. Like, say this is okay. the two mounts of the 
x-axis on the y's, you don't know where that is. There is no set mm -hmm. that you do. And even if you print, okay, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. sometimes you can maybe like hit something or your motor skips or whatever happens, you get out of alignment and everything is now skewed that you're printing. So safe bet is upon every single print. You go, so it's like this, it goes, and then evens out, so and then the moves y back. So makes sense, not for the x, right? So x is a single axis, so we don't need to do that. Okay, yeah, okay. We just have a one, one end stop there. There's no paralleling issues there. The, the issue comes in when you have parallel axes that you know they have to be moving equally. So even things like maybe the belt is tensioned like a little more on one axis than the other, and it goes off a little bit, well, Maybe that builds up over time, uh, so it's safe to just bottom it out or max it out on the X, on the Y, and then you know you're at the a good place. And we already did that, so that's something that would go into the start G code. So in a startup <coughs> startup sequence, before you start probing, you might want to do this to make it happen. Okay, so that's just about the mechanics. We're close to that. Like once we get this done, now the other thing is we have to change actually the firmware. Because right now we're set up for like a, whatever, like 200 by 200 bed, well, 150. And the firmware does not, it messes up the motion. You have to tell it in firmware that you've got a meter bed because when it does homing, it homes no more than 150 millimeters. So it just stops there, it never gets to the end stop. It thinks it's on a small bed, so it thinks it should stop because it probably hit the end stop already. We gotta just change the z, z dimension. How do you do that? Um, whoever wants to do that. But uh, this is within, nothing to do with Cure. This is Arduino environment where you would open up your, your code. Um, this is called configuration H within, so if you download Marlin, okay, let's take a look at, say, uh, D3D Universal 2, download Marlin, open it up with an Arduino environment. Well, let's let's do that. So how does that whole process go? Arduino. So open up Arduino. You've got your uh, I probably have so but in the universal you've got of course the software. Download your universal firmware uh, the zip file then extract it Uh, and then in Arduino, uh, you would go File, Open, and then you got your Marlin on desktop. We've got the Marlin Universal I just downloaded and takes you to the .ino file. Now you'll see this, this Arduino code will have a bunch of tabs. Uh, Marlin Universal. Uh, where are all my tabs? Typically, does anyone see the issue here? Marlin. You see what I'm saying? Honestly, Where are all the tabs? Tab. I'm saying you're now, I guess, in the library? Or? No. File. Take it back. I don't, don't. Open recent. So the, doc, the There files. should be a bunch of files in here. Right, right, totally. What happens if you um, go to <laughs> not, not, go go here? And that guy. Oh, maybe there. No. Nope. Huh. Let's see. Let's let's start. Try it again. Let's just open up Marlin. Oh, the Arduino. I'll try to open it from my computer. But you should have like when you open up the Marlin. So I would like to say file. Well, let's see. Let's see what's under Marlin Universal here. Um, and you're saying each one of those files there is a tab? Yeah, yeah, it would show up as a tab. So I'm just wondering why. What happened here? Where's it going to? Marlin. Um, I mean, 
worst case, you're just going to go in a text editor just to configure the yeah. page. So that's all you need really right now. Okay, well, something's weird here, but configuration H is the file that you want. So you'd want you'd want to open it up in text editor, and it has the settings here. There's a there's documentation. If you start to build a new printer and you want to do all the kinds of different settings, there's um, it should be a, it's well documented on the wiki somewhere. Like configuration H, how do you what are all the parameters that are relevant? But what we want right now is the bed size. Um, 3D printer software. Um, we've did, done this so many times, but let's see. Well, you can actually. It's useful to actually look at what's all in inside this configuration H file. But you'll see like a whole bunch of things like define serial port, baud rate extruder number blah 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 but you just kind of parse through it and then temp so temperature like minimum and max temperatures that you're allowed now here's the geometry like end stops like min and n inverting it oh, whatever okay axis steps per unit feed rates accelerations there's uh, extruder position compared to the where the axis is um, but here is this is like travel limits after homing this is what you need it's a uh, bed size effectively so so yeah that's why like when you're I'm homing it's limiting me out at 150 so here you gotta change this to a thousand and I think that's it at this point because otherwise we paid attention to like the end stop is at the x min, the y end stop is at y max. So actually the configuration that we have in front of the, on the printer, is if we look west, meaning towards like, look west from the east side, that's like x, y. So where's the end stop going to be? x min is going to be on this side, so that's where the end stop is on the x. But Y max, if you go in Y, Y is that way. Y max means the end stop is there by the controller on the Y. So I made sure to do that so we don't mess change anything in the code. So we, we have less versions of code that we have to change. Only thing we got to change is this bed size. That's it. So well, just do that you could, and that's it. Also change. Uh, right now you're limited to... <laughs> yeah, so do a thousand. So what do we got? We got like a thousand probably like a thousand and then we've got like two thousand or something um, so so we need to upload that can if you you've done this before uploading changing you've changed stuff in configuration H right yeah, yeah so well, if we can just change we don't really have a chance to move the bed really down at least that's what I fiddled around with um, you know what I mean you it's um, once you have it basically auto homing then the once you home it it's you can go down and, yeah and you, mm. but it will still uh, I don't think it will we'll have a look okay I don't think it would still let you get beyond that 150 until we change this here so yeah, okay. let's um, have a look at it uh, yeah so uh, but the idea is when you start it only allows you to move a little bit until you home like it doesn't allow you to move negative too much I think allows you to move positive it's limited. You'd think like it's broken because you're trying to do the move move axis and yeah, it doesn't no want to move one way or the other. No negative. Yeah, but you can move backwards after you go up, so you, but not to the negatives. Mm -hmm. Thing is, there the first thing you got to do when you're testing is do the home, auto home, and that way you can once after that it'll allow you to move the entire bed everywhere, but pending this change here, so you actually get the full range of motion. Yeah. So we should take a rough measurement in centimeters. The end stops, I wanted to put them at the location where if you're triggered at at the home position, you'd be at those at the corners. So the X minimum, so it's right on the edge on the X. 
and it's right on the edge of the Y at the, at the back. So that when you print, you know you were right at the bed. You don't have to like give it extra steps, which would happen in start G code. It's like you would say, move over until you reach the bed effectively. You know where the bed is compared to your end stops. But end stops right now are right at the bed, right at the corners of the bed. So we're, we're good. So that's all, that's all we need to know on that. Now, pending that, we're ready to roll. Like, but I would so definitely the the weights. We'll clean that up. I, I can work on that. I, I'll take the slabs and cut them on an the iron worker and weld little tabs on them and do that. Um, the second thing is we can try two belts. I would actually try that. What if? Well, for one, can we just get two belts on that one pulley? Yeah, would, would they cross? Like the do they cross? They, they, they might, jump. They might jump on you. But I mean, they are tight. They are tight next to each other, so it's they might just stay. Cause yeah, try it with one. should try it, try it with one. Try it with the one that was troublesome. If that works, I think we can just go with that, uh, because, I mean, especially if the belt pinch holds them maybe just at a little distance, it might yeah. work just right. The other thing I was thinking, if that does not work, we can think about actually modifying those pulleys, as in, there's a you could slide that I think you can slide that tab that's on top we have to look at it the worst case is you cut it cut it in half and then put a second one on maybe the two will fit and then you have a hacksaw a hacksaw cut it in half why why that because you well the idea here here is we're trying to use two belts and you don't want them to cross so if they don't cross upon mounting that'll be great Right now the pulley is relatively wide, and I guess it's relatively the wide. could travel from, you know, between, but I guess in effect right now it seems it just stays at one, perhaps at one position, at yeah. the far end, or, or at one side. But Maybe it's perfectly fine to run two belts on one if the tensioning is good, because they will, you know, hit each other and should not yeah, and, uh, should jump on one if that one enough. We think sure. we need two. Well, I mean, we're still, to make it more robust, I mean, okay. right now we're definitely skipping at a force less than the motor can put put out. Yeah. So we're not tapping the full strength of the motors right now, okay. the way it is. See, see, I would try to sure the others are not Yeah, the others, yeah, the others don't worry about those. Just fine. Yeah, but we should optimize this because then that gets us... We are limited on how much belt we have of that at the moment. Oh, um, we do not want to use up all the supply, so we can't do the cutting back. Are we sure? Maybe we oh, can unless you have a ton more here. I don't know. We might have it. I mean, I don't know. I, we maybe are just fine. I just don't want us to, yeah, to make it not possible to do the cutting bit. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we can kind of clamp the belt together and push them. I think there was a whole. Yeah. I think there was more rolls back in the corner there. Did you see more? There's like four bags, I think. Okay, so maybe so we I are pretty think tight. We're, we're like we're on the edge. Okay. Yeah, if we double up everything, I don't think we'll have. Torch table. I mean, okay. we need belts for the torch table. Yeah. And stuff like that. Which will right. be heavy. We don't need. We only need one band on that. So. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So we should probably do that and then. Yeah. Like measure out the amount we need for that. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds good. So. Uh, on, um, yeah. What about uh, bed leveling? Apart bed leveling, do we need to change uh, coordinates? Oh yes, yes, a good, good point. So for bed leveling, we have a pro being at a little section. Yes, okay. Let's actually go back into take a look at that real quick, because um, that you're right. And what what do we want to do now? We probably want to do like nine point, uh, like poke it every foot, because now we got a huge surface that we need to correct for. Right. So uh, bed leveling. So the bed leveling we were using was, uh, oh man, yeah, uh, we were doing this, not three point, we're doing, <coughs> what are we doing, four, enabled, four points right now, I believe. Uh, so, three points. Three points. 
Auto bed level linear. Well, right now. For some reason, I thought I counted four. Well, actually, look. Uh, according to what we have here, it's this one is not commented out. So auto bed leveling linear and linear. So here's what linear does. You select number grid points. So here we would put three by three. And then we would change the bed positions from like left would be like uh, we could keep that but but right would be like 950 well let's call it make an easy number like a hundred so 10 centimeters in and then here we would go all the way to 900 and then we'd go again to a hundred for the front and 900 at the back because we got a meter bed so something like that and then it would select three points between those limits so that's that's what we got to do there Three nine. times three would be nine. But you got a hundred and hundred, a hundred and hundred. So left, right, front, and left. Four yeah, those so are four points you're of your probing area, and you're yeah, saying that the area, there's three, three grid points. So a three by three grid. Yeah. So okay, so that's a good job, Ken. That's we got to do that. Um, next. Um. Okay, uh, that solves that. Uh, on a shredder, actually, hey, those we got two motors ready to go. So I would say, Brad, if maybe you could pick that up. Uh, but actually, Jeff needs help on taping, so do that. After you're done with that, yeah, let's go out there and pick them up because then we can start setting up a table and doing all the oh, shredder. Cool yeah. The Maybe. Of our slabs of metal and our, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, like mounting the motors would be the first thing because we said that we're going to decide on the exact length. It'll pr probably be like limited by the amount of steel we have because it's like if it's 48 plates, that's like 48 feet of steel or like 40 feet of steel. Uh, I'd like to do like 24, 24 plates, which is I think we should do as many which as we is can. two feet, yeah. two feet a length of grinder, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's like 40. Uh, they're gonna be like eight, eight inches, so eight inches times 50, like 400 inches, which is uh, yeah, like what is that like 40, 30, 40 feet or so. Uh, I think we have like 60 feet even, so uh, this is actually going to get heavy, like, uh, so that's another consideration there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Shredder, we can go on that. Um, on the filament maker, let's set up that table to, to work on a filament maker. Uh, we, we should get those parts out so we can actually start playing with them and actually getting it all together. But um, yeah, the belts and weights are the two critical things just to make sure like, okay, we can get this thing rolling. We can actually now go all the way up and down. Let's try to print like a big column of um, just this thing like a tube or a cylinder that's just like huge. So let's try to do that today like as soon as we can. Um, that's about all. On the torch table, we're moving right along. Any blocks there or you ready to mount axes on the... How are you going to do that? Um, we're gonna hold it, right? Yeah, we can we can just go through yep. one side of the the four inch and put I don't know pair of pliers. Well, Christian, something. what are we doing? We went through that yesterday, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, we we still need to cut eight more for the idler part, right? Because if we got no, we we need eight. We just need eight. We're just gonna put it in the back. So the idea was, <clears throat> tor so let's go into the dock, so, so torch table, this is useful to document because it's a cool way to hang stuff, but let's duplicate slide here, so, so axis mounting on tubular frame, because 
the holes we have one inch holes but there's two being so like it's kind of inconvenient you have to use like a one inch bolt but I mean how do you mount our little axis with a one inch bolt or something uh, so so axis mounting what does it look like to square tube so let's go with so if we have our axis this is from let's say from the uh, end view um, end view of axis so that would have your shafts like there So you're looking from the end, how do you mount it? So the, the frame is going to be, the tube that you're mounting to is going to be a vertical tube, right? Because it's that big vertical tube we have. So this is your 4x4 tube with the holes in it. But we just said, okay, let's just take a piece of angle and make a bracket like this. So just go take a 1.5 inch piece, it's actually 2 inch. So what we did was do this, take a piece of angle welded there and do the same thing on top um, and just slip it in there. And, okay, so that's, that's what I'm saying. So that's the, the motor part, right? That, I mean... Yeah, that's the motor part and, that's, and the idle part and is the and same. Why are we and not, the idle part is the same. So yeah. And why are we not just doing it like we've done all the others and just drill a hole through and... You can. So we have <laughs> you can, but it's double the drilling, and it's a long, long hole through two layers of well, I don't have to go tube. Through two layers it's you can't reach inside. How are you going to reach the inside. nut inside? Mm -hmm. How are you going to reach a nut inside the tube? Um, carefully. Very. Yeah. If you have holes, hands smaller than one inch. Mm -hmm. no, no, I mean, how far down are we mounting it? We're fairly high to the top of the, the thing, right? Yeah, you could you could get your hand in there. Yeah, I I already tested. Okay. Like seeing if I could do that. And All right. Just well, I you could do it. Uh, this is. Uh, the thing there is. Yeah, you could do that. You could do that if you want to do that drilling. Yeah. But then you got to do precise holes here. You just weld them on and you're done. Yeah. You got it's much it's harder what you're proposing. But then we've got to get that tight, they've got to be bang on level, otherwise, like, same, same, same. Well, really. They, not really, because you got two points and they just got to be at the same height. Yeah. If, if they kind of are too wide, put a little shim in there to press it against. Okay, yeah. Like, if, you know, that little space there, if it's not accurate, just yeah. a little shimmy. Um, so, I mean, either way, but I think this is much easier. It's this. Okay. We already got the little pieces cut. And oh, no. yeah, driver. let's try one of each. Well, you could, yeah, if yeah. you want to try that. And then we'll choose the third option. <laughs> and I, uh, to yeah, me, it seems like the the, the solution is clear. What's going to happen? But I don't. Uh, I'm not sure why you're so you're the pursuing the pain of that drilling. That it's hard you? work. Unless you're so pumped that, man. Just got it. Uh, yeah, that's the yeah. one axis with the angles on them. Yeah. I, let's do this first, see how well it works, and, and if, yeah. we, if it's all lovely, dory, let's keep going like that. Yeah, so yeah, so that's welds there, the red are welds. So that's just the Y axis. So we're just going to Yeah, this is Y axis. Uh -huh. uh, the X hangs between the X's, the Y's. Um, so there we have to... The Y's are the long ones. Uh -huh. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Now, do we have any issues mounting the the two X's Hopefully to the two right Y's? No, I don't think so, because we already mounted that. We did that on the big yeah, printer so already. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay, so oh, yeah, but there... like, Okay, so here's, here's the concept which people didn't do. So do this... Uh, let's make this a specific point. Uh, how do you actually do? Wait. 
slide, duplicate slide. Um, mounting the x, mounting x axis to y. So there's a point where you want to get a good tight connection, and to do that, so say this is your, well, once again, the, if this is your end view of axis, of y axis, let's say, Yeah, let's let's call that the carriage there. NV of Y axis of Y carriage. So there's bolt holes that we have on top. So let's represent them by these bolt holes that we have there. Right? Ream those out so that the bolt threads are not catching on that. Otherwise you cannot pinch it to what's next to it. So the important point is ream this out larger than threads. Do you see the purpose? So ream this larger than thread size. That wasn't done on a, on a large printer. So there's a space there right now. And it's a looser connection. You don't have, you only have bolt hold. You don't have friction hold. There's friction, there's yeah. clamp force that we're not using there right now. Now when that happens, if you go in and then you come back out and go back in regularly, that solves that, doesn't it? Not if you're catching the same thread. It doesn't. I mean, the threads prevent it. Yeah. So the next piece is here. So, um, so the idea there is, so this is like, say, the idler piece or like, I don't know, whatever. Uh, this is the x-axis piece. Y-axis carriage. Yeah, that, that space closes up. This so basically this way the let's draw a bolt there. This way, the bolt clamps down and eliminates space, allowing for both bolt strength and clamp force to hold axis, x axis, to hold x to y. That's the reason. So your this head now presses against, because there's no threads catching that, that gap closes up. So that's just industry standard at Factory Farm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but pay attention to that, because that's like, if you don't have that, I mean, your axe is going to wobble a little, but that's just quality loss on the on the output of the machine. So, okay, cool. Uh, what else? Critical path, CNC torch. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, we should for the film and maker. Let's just get out. I'll, can we clean up? Well, if we have a space there, take take one table dedicated to all those parts. Uh, but we don't like we don't have too many people, so I think we can probably get going. <laughs> yeah. Any questions on the work ahead? So so priorities. Get that motion on a large printer. We're so close, and I would look forward to a nice, big, impressive structure printed in vase mode where it goes like spirals up and along uh, so it'll be a pretty quick print in fact we could just like go make it go fast man like like this thing can go fast so we'll see how fast it can go without losing quality like I mean this is a pretty solid structure right now so we should possibly be able to go really really fast and still retain very high quality yeah uh, just maybe one point to consider if we at the beginning want to still constrain you know, the, the dimensions uh, a bit more because if you are debugging, you know, it just takes a long time, let's say, if you're bottom of out, it takes quite a while to go all the way down, bottom out, moving up again, then it goes all the way, the axis to home. Those are actually settings within Marlin that you can speed yeah. the, all that up. <laughs> Uh, if we want to. Um, just wondering if you do that maybe five times in a row, then it gets tedious. But yeah. Just a thought. At, at that point, we would want to go into Marlin and get those speeds there. There's like, there's homing speeds. Okay. Uh, all those, I believe, are in configuration H. So if you parse that, see if you can up one of those values. I know that was an issue like once we got into those 12 and 18 inch beds where actually, yeah, I speeded up the homing part okay. where, yeah, you can make it go as fast as you want, okay. yeah, and yeah, it could go pretty fast, I mean, I mean, it could go zippy, yeah, okay. mm -hmm. uh, yep. Smaller location, do we need it? Uh, I'll, I got the weights, who's got the belts, the, belts. the double belt, in, double well, belt job. You guys got the axes. Can you want to do the new firmware? Yeah. Uh, Holger. Maybe a controller yeah. for the torch, or should yeah. just focus? I, let's see. If I find something um, for the printer, I would rather do that to get that. Um, double belt. Do the double belt. I yeah, know I would like to um, yeah. participate in the electronic side of things. It's yeah. I'm not learning any of that at the moment. And I Dream team. Yeah, we can work together. <laughs> Everybody works together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think God could be really have a big print going this day. I think mean, that should be realistic. I mean, yeah, that would be a doable goal for change. Maybe even a succeed. Yeah, and then we haven't talked about we haven't touched the high temperature chamber. But if we get the get the motion, get all this going, yeah, high temperature chamber, and we do that part. But let's get the axis, all the motion, right. So 1.2, just drill it out, man. Let's drill it out to like 1.6. No, I mean, that's what I do. When I had the small nozzles, 0.4, and I needed a 1.2, just drill it out with a 1.2 millimeter. Yeah, you can do that. Entire length of it? Yeah, well, you got you got to stop at close to the tip. You've got like two or three millimeters at like probably like two millimeters at the tip you got to stop before you bust through the hole um, no actually there's two things you can do one is to remount the whole neck to a larger diameter filament size so for example what I did was I had like 1.75 nozzles and I reamed it out with a three millimeter bit to make it into a three millimeter nozzle now as far as the tip uh, the tip, you only have to go the actual aperture, it narrows down, like it, it has the filament tube and then it narrows down to the nozzle. Okay, so, it so the there nozzle. you just got to puncture a couple of millimeters, that's easy. Gotcha. But yeah, let's do like, uh, the limit's going to be the heating, how much we can heat. So if you press the 1.2 pretty hard, you probably get to the limit of how fast you can heat. So going to a larger nozzle actually does not help so if we have uh, like a really warm environment like it's still kind of summery right now we could probably though, right? well all that is outside 
All those parts are outside the chamber. The, the head? Only the nozzle is like... Okay. The heating part is actually above. It's just the nozzle tip that's like right below that surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, right. But you can still put like a little shroud around that too if you want to. But should um, we sink that? It would be maybe nice, really, if we had the, the whatever heat broker, how that's called. Well, we have the super volcano, we can put it on, but let's make this thing work first and some of the upgrades would be, let's go to super volcano and we get twice the extrusion, well, more than twice the extrusion rate, four times the extrusion rate apparently. Mm -hmm. So. Because right yeah. now we have the plastic part and the nozzle and we couldn't fit probably a sheet in between, right? Because they're super. So it would be hard That's a concern. You have to mount it in a way that yeah would be slightly above. So we haven't really touched that yet, but yeah, with the super volcano, uh, that might be easier because we the whole volcano. Yeah, that that could be inside the chamber. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Yep. And by the way, I'm going to my high school reunion on on Saturday. That's going to be crazy. 30 years, never been back. <laughs> Where is it? It's going to be crazy. In, in um, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Uh, so for Saturday, you guys got backlog of th things to do. Like tomorrow, we're, I'm still here, but I'm leaving early on oh, Saturday. Yeah, totally bored, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've got a backlog of a few things. So. <laughs> Well, no worries. Just enjoy the viewing. Yeah. And yeah. Don't worry. Gonna be fine. No problem. No problem. Are you going to the airport on Saturday? Very early in the morning. So, oh, okay. what time are you leaving? Uh, my flight's at noon. Yeah. So, my flight's at six a.m. So, Boy. super early. Okay. I don't know if you want to do that, but yeah, you could jibber jabber on the way up. Eight hours. Coming back on Sunday. Just real nice. quick. Be, uh, in and out. Yeah. No, she didn't feel like the early mornings because early gonna, flights every she's day. She's gonna come head out the shop. Yep. <laughs> um. Yep. Christian, do you remember Christian Cheer? Yeah. Yeah. He sent his regards. Oh. I was just cool. talking to him. Yeah. Sounds like you'd be part of that crew. Indeed, of course. Yeah. I mean. He he was part of Regen, floating Regen. Yeah, well, I, I, tried, I knew him before, but no. Oh, did he? Um, he's not part of Regen anymore. Or? He stepped down and left, so that he's still kind of involved. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, he said he was here what ten years ago. Or yeah, quite well, a bit ago. Mm -hmm. All right. He has become uh, quite the epic uh, Wesley uh, crypto uh, mogul. Is that so? Or, 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 yeah. 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 Starting his own nation state. Like the previous person.